Are you confused by the world of mobile attribution? Whether you have privacy requirements on iOS versus Android, how attribution models work, and how a tool like AppSire actually helps you solve all those problems? Well, you're in the right place. In this video, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into how the AppSire dashboards and data and attribution models and the partner integrations actually work, some of the caveats, some of the things to keep in mind, and how to make the most of your data. Let's jump right in. So this is the second video of a four video series as we continue this case study for a fitness company that's just starting to implement AppSlider within the tech stack alongside Brace, Mixpanel, Google Tag Manager, and a few other tools. In the first video, check that out if you haven't, we looked at the SDK implementation. This is the heart of AppSlider is what you have to do before you can even look at data reporting or anything else. So assuming you did that, you're in the right video. Now in this video, let's start by looking at the dashboard in a little bit more detail and some of the initial caveats that we can, we can start to see as we deal with privacy limitations and iOS data in particular. So we're here in the basic dashboard, uh, very handy, it typically gives you a lot of things that you care about. Right? We, of course, we have a total installs, a breakdown between non-organic and organic. Uh, again, typically non-organic is anything that you're driving. So it may be uh, an ad platform like an Apple search ads or Facebook ads, Google ads, or it could be your own media, things like newsletters and blog posts or anything that you're using, one link to track them. So you can start to have a little bit of a split and organic, of course, naturally becomes everything else that's not being tagged or tracked in any way. Now, if you're passing revenue data, you're gonna see that. And of course, if you're connected with partners, you're gonna see cost data as well. Uh, many partners do provide this cost data for you automatically. Now, down here, just a, a few other things we've seen. We have events, of course, and the breakdown between organic and non-organic. And this sort of campaign performance data where we can start to do a, a overview table data and see the different performance by the different channels, whether it be something like Facebook ads, which is down to an integration, or again, any kind of custom one link campaigns or sources that you're using. I also wanna note that AppSlider is starting to add a little bit more AI, so LLM integrations, which I always think are actually quite handy. So be able to actually talk to your data in natural language and get back some responses. Uh, this is still in beta, but uh, high potential for making it easier to be able to uh, work with your data. Now, the other thing I want to note here is you're going to see something called the single source of truth. You see it here as well, right? Under my dashboards, a single source of truth or the classic overview, which is what we're looking at. If we check this, the data changes uh, slightly depending on, on what percentage of iOS data you have. Now, this is where we start to kind of get a gauge at the impact of iOS. I want to show you the documentation directly to understand exactly what the single source of truth is. So right here, this is the key paragraph. Basically, since iOS 14, AppSlider now has to use multiple data streams to be able to handle attribution data specifically for iOS in particular. So of course, iOS 14, Apple introduced the scan network, which is sort of Apple's own way of kind of helping you attribute things in a bit of a black box way. AppSlider, of course, has its own uh, attribution model. We're gonna look at that very briefly in this video. Uh, any other insights, uh, maybe dedicated APIs, like the one Apple Search App provides, Anyway, it's quite complex. Uh, you can dive deeper, especially into the logic of how the models work, if possible. You know, Apple, of course, doesn't uh, share as much, as much information as we might like. But the point is, this single source of truth is gonna deal with some duplication and give you a better insight into your data. You can actually compare what this looks like, the classic versus single source of truth. Again, the more iOS data you have, the more useful the single source of truth data will be. And it's just a handy checkbox, right? It's not permanent, you can kind of go back and forth. So. I highly recommend you, you use that uh, whenever possible. Talking about attribution models, let's look at actually how AppSlider handles attribution. Now, the attribution model kind of looks like this, right? This is a handy image where we have, you know, different touches. The a user might click on an ad, on ad, go to the app, maybe not download it, maybe yes. It might come from different sources like your own media, ad platforms, blog, newsletter, a bunch of stuff. And then AppSlider is trying to store it through all of it. Now, the first thing to remember here is that after attribution model is one perspective on your conversions. Of course, Facebook is gonna have a different perspective. So will Google Ads, so will Apple Search Ads, so with Mixpanel if you run it, or if you take your data to a data warehouse and you do your own attribution model. So you have different attribution models and not necessarily the truth. Uh, I typically think of them more as opinions on what your data looks like and a counterpoint. We can imagine how there may be some uh, negative incentives for some ad platforms like Facebook, Google Ads to perhaps take credit for some conversions that don't belong to them. So this is just a way of, of balancing different sources of data to get closer to what the truth might be. Now down here in the attribution methods, uh, this kind of gives an insight into what's going on, whether different data points are being used to make up the attribution model. You can see this actually quite a bit, right? There's preferred data that might be coming from the app stores, device ID, 
There's the probabilistic uh, models. There's a scan network we saw before, right, from Apple. Perhaps the Apple Search Ads API, any deep link information. So it's quite a few things, right? You can see the kind of vary depending on the platform that you're using, if it's iOS or not, uh, who does it, and so on. There's some logic here of, of priority for how these things kind of come into play, and a few more details about all of them and how they might look like, uh, and so on. Again, generally speaking, you can dive into this if you're interested. The point is to know that there's multiple things at play. This is much more complex than web attribution if you're coming from that world and just using UTM parameters. From the reporting perspective, you don't have to know all these details, but if you're curious about discrepancies or how things are working, there is a lot you can dive into to try to understand what is going on and kind of give the best answer possible. But just so you know, I, I sort of consider AppSlider to be the more neutral attribution model in this world because they don't really have a sort of horse in the race, so to speak. And they're, they're looking at everything, not just one source. You know, Facebook just looks at Facebook data and Google just looks at Google Ads data. So I find this to be a great neutral zone, but naturally some teams prefer to report from ad platforms or they prefer to report somewhere else. So you have to figure out with your team what's the easiest and most aligned way to report on this data. But the AppSlider attribution model is a great source nonetheless. Whether you're an app marketer or a product manager in the mobile world, one thing's clear, growth isn't guesswork. To scale, you need reliable data. That's where AppSlyer comes in. It gives you a single source of truth to measure, analyze, and optimize every marketing touch point. So you know what's driving results and what's not. That's why the world's top brands trust it. No more guessworks, just smarter decisions. Book a demo now by scanning the QR code on screen or click the link in the description. That being said, Let's continue on with the rest of the video. A key point to cover here is the IDFA. This is the whole thing about iOS that was introduced back in iOS 14.5 years ago. You have likely seen this kind of prompts, apps asking if you want to track them. The general co conversion here varies, but last stats I saw, they're somewhere around 30%. They have been declining over the long term, so they're getting lower and lower. If a user says no, then the IDFA is not provided to AppSlyer or anyone else. The impact of this varies, right? When this first happened, Facebook, Google Ads were clearly affected by it. These days, it doesn't really seem that they're actually as affected by a lack of IDFA. The Facebook models, yeah, the Google Ads models, uh, they have sort of tweaked the model to not weigh as much the IDFA. Apple, of course, has their kind of own special black boxes like the scan or, or the Apple Search Ads API, so they kind of do their own thing. Uh, perhaps they use the IDFA, maybe they don't. But this is not a critical issue, is the point I want to underscore. If you don't have the IDFA, most ad platforms are still going to be able to do attribution, maybe really unaffected compared to it. But if you have it, great. It's just one extra data point that all the ad platforms can use. And of course, AppSlyer itself can use in their attribution model. So you do want to make sure this is integrated. Check out the first video on that. And as much as possible, you know, if you're going to get the 25, 30% of the users give you a DFA, great. You know, this is a 30% sort of sample of your data that has a little bit more accuracy than the other 70%, and it just feeds the attribution models, whether AppSlyer or the app platforms or anything else. Lastly, let's look at the integrations. So AppSlyer has quite a bit of integrations. Uh, the most common ones are here, Meta Ads, Facebook, Google Ads, TikTok, Mixpanel, Amplitude, Braze. Uh, you're likely gonna find them here. And of course, there's a lot of ad networks that are a little bit more obscure, a little bit more niche, and they will be here as well. But the integrations are all quite quite similar. If you look at the Meta Ads here, you know we're gonna start by adding kind of app ID. Uh, you're gonna get this from Facebook. Then you have some special settings here, again, depending on what kind of data sharing you want to do with Facebook. You have your attribution windows. Uh, you have some recommendations by AppSlyer, and, and I would encourage for you to maybe match this with whatever Facebook has, so there's some consistency. Uh, different attribution windows are, of course, going to lead to different results, and you will have discrepancies. So as much as possible, if you can match settings across both platforms, you can try to reduce these frequencies as much as you can. There's some re-engagement attribution windows here. Here's actually how we use events, right? If you saw that from the first video, once you have your custom events, uh, you can actually then send them into the app platform itself and include values, revenue. Uh, you can include all the media sources, which is I think is a, the better behavior, not just the, the sources to this partner. If you only send this partner only, that means that you're only going to send whatever Facebook, whatever AppSlyer attributes to this partner, which is going to be less than what the partner might do on its own. In this case, we have a, a sort of special scan configuration here that we might use. And we have a few other tabs. Some partners will have attribution links that you can use uh, in your campaigns. And again, this sort of helps AppSlyer with attribution. Again, if you have this, you want to use this whenever possible. This is the ability to bring down cost data. You typically integrate with the partner itself through a, uh, an account. 
and you bring that in. Some partners have specific ad revenue data. You want to just double check this. Facebook actually has some special sort of ad revenue data that, that, that they have. I've actually never used this myself, uh, but again, if this is relevant to you, you will have this. We have the scan network. Again, we want to make sure this is all integrated properly. And then permissions is just the permissions for the integration itself uh, within your team and who can access it. So again, every integration kind of looks like this. I can quickly show you Brace since it's not an app platform, but you can see it's roughly the same. You know, we have the specific endpoints, uh, maybe the uh, post specs we want to send, in this case, the install. And you can see we don't have any other stuff available, so it's even simpler. This allows you to send the app player data, particularly the data we care about at the very minimum is actually the install event. Uh, so this app store will send it and you can then use it in your reporting or other tools. Keep in mind, there are privacy limitations to exporting this data. For example, Facebook does not allow the exporting of attribution data to other platforms. So even though app store might determine there are a thousand installs that belong to Facebook, when those are exported to the same mix panel or brace, they will come in marked as organic. Again, just one of the many, many caveats to when you deal with this data in the mobile attribution world. But you have to check this from an integration perspective, connect things, and you kind of see you know, what comes in, what doesn't come in. Just a handy way to be able to connect all this great app store attribution data with as many tools as possible in the rest of your stack. And that's all we have for this video. This is the second video in the four video series. In the next video, the third one, we will dive deeper into the world of own media. Clearly the ad platform data is complex. You're not sure what it's there, but you have a bunch of channels that you control and the app store is fantastic to be able to track them through the one link and other functionality. So we're gonna dive deeper into that as we continue this case study of how AppSlider fits for this fitness company. So be sure to look for that video in the next few days or click the link right here on the screen. My name is Ruben Garte and I'll see you in the next video.